sine of angle A, the capital letters are for the angles, over the side opposite, so you can think of these as a pair, equals the sine of angle B over its side opposite, these are a pair, equals the sine of angle C over its side opposite. So you only need to use two of these three ratios to form a proportion. So I'll give you an example. So let's take, for example, this triangle here. Okay, say this angle is 60 degrees. Say this side over here is 8. Say this angle here is 100 degrees. And say we want to find the side that's across from that angle. We'll just call this side X. So what you want to think of when you do the law of sines is you want to think of the angle and the side opposite are a pair. So 60 and 8 form a pair, 100 and X form a pair. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a proportion using the law of sines. Sine of 60 over 8 equals the sine of 100 degrees over its side opposite X. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply, cross the equal sign, and we get 8 sine 60, sorry, 8 sine 100, multiplying on the diagonal, equals x sine 60. And then all we have to do is divide by sine of 60. Sine 60, divide by sine 60 degrees. These are going to cancel and x is going to equal that quantity right there. So let's just check real quick and see what that is on the calculator. So let's see, my mode, let's see, I am in degrees. Okay, that's good. And let's see, we've got 8 sine 100 divided by sine 60. Okay, 9.1 approximately. Okay, so that's the law of sines. Now, what comes up with the law of sines that oftentimes confuses students is what they call the ambiguous case. So we're going to talk about the ambiguous case. This is where there can be two triangles, there can be one triangle, there can even be no triangle, given the information uh, that they give you in the problem. So let me see if I can show you how that works, and uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, so when you do the uh, law of sines, the ambiguous case, it occurs when you have side, side, angle. And the reason I wrote it like that is because this is going to be an acute angle. The side next to that acute angle is going to be longer than the side across from that acute angle. So I'll show you what I mean. So say, for example, this is 30 degrees and say this is 10, and say this side over here is 6. Okay, what you want to do is you want to drop an altitude like that. So now what we have is we have a right triangle right here on the left, and we're going to find out what is that altitude. So to do that, we're just going to use regular right triangle trigonometry. Sine of 30 degrees equals, I'll call that H, h over 10. So sine of 30 equals opposite of hypotenuse. What you can do is you can cross multiply on the diagonal and you get h equals 10 times the sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 is a half times 10 is 5. So this height is 5. Okay now here's where the analysis comes in. This side right here, we don't know anything about this angle. Okay we don't know anything about this angle. This side here, you could rotate this side in such a way that it could actually be like that. So you could rotate it so this triangle could, even, could either be like this or you could rotate it like that because we don't know what this angle is. It's not fixed. So what we end up here in this situation where this side across from the acute angle is in between the altitude and the side adjacent that's when you get two triangles. 
Okay. Now, say for example this side over here, instead of being six, it was four. Well, if it was four, it would only be like this long right here. And if you rotate it, so you think of this as a hinge, if you rotate it, it's not going to be long enough to reach this side. So in that case, there would be no triangle possible. Now, if this was exactly five, it would be a right triangle. If this side was greater than 10, again, think of this as a hinge, if it was greater than 10, if we swung this side over here, it would be too long. It wouldn't intersect the side. It would actually go past this side right here. So in that case, you're just going to have one triangle possible. It'd have to swing out like that. So these are the different cases with the law of sines. Let's take a look at how to solve this problem that has two triangles, and then we can look at some other examples. So the first thing you want to do is, let's label this triangle. A, B, and C. This is going to be side A, side C, and uh, side B across from each other. So what we're going to do here is, we're going to do the law of sines. Sine of 30 over 6 equals sine of C over 10. Sine of 30 over 6 equals sine of, go to this side here, sine of C over 10. So again, if we, if we multiply both sides by 10, these 10s are going to cancel. Okay. And if we simplify this on our calculator, let's see what that comes out to. 10 times the sine of 30 divided by 6. 0.83. So I'm just going to round. 0.83 equals the sine of C. And then if you take the sine inverse of both sides, that's how you solve for angle C. So C is the sine inverse of 0.83. Let's do that. Sine inverse 0.83, we get 56.4 degrees. Let's just call it 56 for this example. Keep it simple. Now, what I want you to realize is when we took this side here and we swung it like this, this actually forms an isosceles triangle. So if this is 6, this is 6. If this is 56 degrees, which we just solved for, this here will also be 56 degrees. And by doing 180 minus 56, we can solve for this angle right here. So what we've got here is we've got this triangle. Okay, that's this one right here. And we have this as a possible triangle right here. So if this is 56, this would be 180 minus 56, which is 124. So this is going to be 124. This is 56. This is 30. And this is 30. And what else do we know? This is 6. This is 10. This is 6. This is 10. And so now what you can do is you can add these two angles together and subtract from 180 to find this angle. You can add these two angles together, subtract from 180 and find this angle. So let's do that. That's 86. So this must be 94. This one here is 154, which means this must be 26. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to solve for this missing side right here by doing the law of sines again. So sine of 26 over the side opposite equals sine of 30 over its side opposite. Same thing here, sine of 94 over its side opposite equals sine of 30 over its side opposite. And that's how you're going to solve for these two missing sides. So in this case, you get two triangles. And again, that's because this side was in between the altitude and the side adjacent. So there's actually two possible triangles. So that's the law of sines, the ambiguous case. And now what I want to do is just talk a little bit about how to find the area of a triangle if it's not a right triangle, if you don't have the altitude. And let's just take a look at that next. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of a triangle. So say, for example, your triangle is like this. Say this is 10. 
say this is 70 degrees, say this is 15, okay? You wanna find the area of the triangle. Now before we learned the formula for the area of a triangle was what? One half base times height. The base is the bottom, the height is this right here. Okay, the altitude, that's how tall the triangle is. Well, we don't have the height. So how are we gonna be able to solve for the height? What we can do is we can do sine of 70 equals h over 10. So sine of 70 degrees equals h over 10. By cross multiplying, we get h equals 10 times sine of 70. So let's see what that is. 9.4 will round. And now we can do 1 half the base 15 times the height 9.4, we have the area of the triangle. So let's just write that down. 1 half the base, which is 15, times the height, which is 9.4. But where do we get the 9.4 from? It was 10 times the sine of 70. So what I want to point out here is that this is one way to find the area of the triangle. The other way to find the area of the triangle is to use this formula right here that I'm gonna show you next. Let's go over here to this side. So say you know this angle, I'm just gonna write A for angle A. And you know this side, let's say we'll call this side one and this side two. If you wanna find the area of this triangle, all you have to do is do one half times side one, times side two, times the sine of the included angle. Included means in between those two sides. So sine of angle A, okay, right here. And that's it, that's the area of the triangle. So it's very easy. So if you have side angle side, the angle is in between two sides, all you have to do is do one half, the two sides multiply together, times the sine of the included angle, and you got it. So a quick example would be like this. Say this is 30 degrees. I like 30 because 30 is easy to find the sign of. And then you've got eight, and let's say this is 10. So very simply, it's gonna be one half, eight times 10 times the sine of 30 degrees. So if you multiply those together, you get one half times eight times 10 is 40 times the sine of 30, sine of 30 is a half. So that's gonna be 20 units squared. Okay, so law of signs, ambiguous case, and how to find the area of a triangle when you don't have the altitude, you can use this formula, one half side one times side two times the sine of the included angle. All right, check out some of my other videos if you have uh, other things that you want to learn about math-wise, uh, feel free to review this video. If you want to pick up uh, some additional pointers, just go through it a second time and uh, keep on studying.